Pixelot has a lot of rules and guidelines. I thought I would try to compile as many of them as I can into this video because I think that would be quite useful for beginners. Honestly, this is the kind of video I wish I could have seen when I was first starting out with Pixelot. Welcome to the do's and don'ts of Pixelot. Art is a subjective matter, so there's no right or wrong way to draw pixel art. These are just the tips I've seen around, so use at your own discretion. If you're going for a specific style that opposes some of these rules, then that is completely okay. If you're stuck and want some rules to follow, these might be helpful. Do hue shifting. Don't use the same hue. When selecting shades for your color palette, make the colors warmer as they ascend in brightness and cooler as they descend in brightness. This will make your palettes more vibrant and colorful. Watch my color palette tutorial for a more in-depth explanation. Do use anti-aliasing. Don't overuse anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is a very useful tool that can have many powerful applications. I would recommend anti-aliasing, but only in small amounts. If too much of it is used, your art can become blurry and convoluted. So it can be better to not use it at all than to overuse it. As always, it is a stylistic decision and will depend on the context. Do have a limited palette. Don't use lots of colors. Unlike a lot of art forms, pixel art uses a very limited palette of around 2 to 25 colors. Sticking to a carefully selected handful of colors will make your pixel art much cleaner. If you use too many colors, it can often become very messy and confusing. Do ease in and out. Don't use linear animation. When animating a character or object, a tool to make your animations look much more alive is easing in and out. When easing, you change the speed of the movement exponentially, starting by moving the object one pixel, then two more pixels, then four, eight, 16, and so on. If you do this, it appears that the object accelerates or speeds up. Easing in and out gives your animation much more life and helps to emphasize movement. I'm thinking about making an animation tutorial, so let me know if that's something you would like to see. Do pixel perfect lines and curves. Don't make jaggies or doubles. One of the strictest rules of pixel art regards jaggies. The community is seemingly joined together to collectively agree that these jaggies look bad. Originally described as an anti-aliasing artifact in images and video, the term jaggies has come to mean a slightly different thing for pixel artists. Jaggies can be described as a misplaced pixel that breaks up the pattern of a line. For straight lines, an example of a jaggie is a one pixel segment placed between two pixel segments. At smaller scales, it is understandable how someone would make a line like this. There just simply is no other way to draw a line of that angle without making jaggies. Generally, to avoid jaggies in line work, make all the segments of your lines the same number of pixels. For curves, the pattern is slightly more complex. The segment at the middle of a curve is one pixel wide. Moving out, the number increases. It doesn't matter how many segments are the same size, just make sure they always increase as you go out from the center of the curve. Never place a small one between larger segments, and the pattern will be something like 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. This mathematical approach assures the artist of perfect circles or curves. Keep this theory in mind when creating more organic line work too. Doubles are when parts of line work overlap, leaving a small section of line work that is two pixels wide. To avoid doubles, remember that curving pixels should always be diagonally touching. A really easy way to not make doubles is to turn on Pixel Perfect when using Ace Bright's brush tool. Do use a dark color instead of black. Don't use black for your outlines. Dark purples, blues, and browns just look nicer than black. Making your outline color a very dark version of the color your sprite's made of can look very aesthetically appealing. This will also make your art look more real and less like a drawing. Do use contrast. Don't use close together shades. I think this rule is similar to the limited color palette. In pixel art, each pixel has to be consciously selected and I think colors can play a major role in that aspect. If your shades are close together, it will look muddy, like a gradient, blend, or accident. If you have contrast in your piece, then the audience will clearly be able to see your decisions and know that you chose to shade there. Plus, it helps with sprite readability and generally makes it look cleaner. Do shade with form. Don't pillow shade or pancake shade. When shading, making your shadows and highlights, try to shade as if the object is three-dimensional. Think about the simple 3D shapes that would make up your object and shade accordingly. Pillow shading occurs when you create highlights and shadows as though the light source is coming directly from the viewer front on, which is almost never the case. Usually light sources work better if they're coming from the top and shining down, or rough on an angle a bit. Pancake shading is where you shade the pixels closest to your light source in your highlight color, and the pixels furthest from your light source in your shadow color. This creates a sort of beveled look, like the object or character is a thick 2D cutout with rounded edges. If you want to make 3D characters and objects, 
tried to avoid this method. Embarrassingly, I unknowingly pancake shaded in one of my tutorials, which happens to be the one that YouTube is promoting the most. At least now I know better. <laughs> 2. Outline exterior lines when required. Don't outline everything. In traditional drawing, it's common to draw all the line work for everything and then color or shade it in. In pixel art, not all the objects, shapes, and clothes have to be outlined. It's good to have an exterior outline, but even that isn't necessary. Again, it's all up to style choice. Do use simple flat colors. Don't use a soft brush, gradient, or blur tool. When creating pixel art, never use gradients. Don't use soft brushes or the blur tool because they will make your art look like a low resolution photo scaled down to the pixel level. Do use a small canvas. Don't use a large canvas. Pixel art is supposed to be about selecting little squares of color, and more importantly, for your audience to see this little squares of color and understand what you're trying to say. Using a big canvas size defeats the purpose of pixel art and removes all the challenge. If you want to make successful pixel art, limit yourself to a small canvas size. I've made a detailed video about this if you want to learn more. And that's all the rules I can think of. Most of the pixel art pros have been learning these tricks for years, and deconstructing them hopefully made their process a little clearer. If you were ever wondering how someone got their colors to look so nice, well, now you know. Just remember, do whatever you think personally looks best, and keep the style consistent. There are so many rules, and I don't think I covered all of them, so please let me and everyone else know in the comments if you remember some that I don't. Have a nice day.